controlled. I didn't want to be stuck in a foreign country by myself in the middle of a drug cartel. Tricked. I was like, oh my God, we were going to get married. I can't believe this. Coerced. He played me to a T. Meet the women who thought they were in love. I really, really liked this guy. It felt like I was a teenager falling in love again. But were being used to commit major crimes. I see a bunch of packages, and I know 100% those are packages of drugs. The next thing I know, I'm in handcuffs. And whose lives would change forever. My whole life is falling apart because I fell in love with the wrong person. I was seeing my whole life flashing in front of my eyes. I thought I was going to die in prison. This time, the former actor who fell in love with a tall, dark, handsome stranger. So cute. And we ended up making love. And then he said, will you marry me? But within months, he had her duped, arrested and detained in Dubai. My whole life just be stopped. She could be facing a significant fine or up to two years in prison. Sorry, Dubai, but this isn't fair. And the two young women tricked by a boyfriend into becoming drug mules. Drug trafficking is an extremely serious crime in Thailand. In some instances, it's punishable by death. And were banged up in one of the world's most notorious jails. Here were two teenage girls facing the fact that they will be in their 40s when they will be released. London, 2016. 49-year-old actor Sophia Hyatt was at a crossroads. I've been very lucky to fulfil a lot of my dreams. I've been in Waterloo Road, Footballers' Wives, Extra Time, Jonathan Creek. Got picked up to do movies in India, which my career just took off there. Looking for more from life, Sophia retrained as an alternative therapist. I wanted to help people. So my focus now is... Mainly my healing practice. I find my work incredibly rewarding. After seven years of building her new business, a brand new client booked a four-hour healing session costing £1,400. The session was really intense. He said he'd been married a number of times and he kept getting divorced because the woman married him for money. I started to feel really sorry for him. At the end of the session, he just had a big smile on his face. He said, I feel so much peace. And he said, can I give you a hug? I said, yes, you can give me a hug now. I hug all my clients, you know, they, they go through a lot. Sophia's new client revealed he was flying home to Dubai the next day but wanted to book another four-hour treatment before he left. When we were doing the second session, at one point he pulls me close to hug me, and then I kind of peeled his hands off, went back to playing the gongs. He did it again, and I think it was the third time it happened he went to try and kiss me, and I said, we can't do this. And then he pulled me close again and kissed me, and this time I was in. Now, I hadn't kissed a guy for five years. Sophia's been looking for a romantic connection for a long time. She's finally feeling like she's got it. What's really important to remember is that when you're in that throes of initial romance, your idea of rationality can be impacted. I was in a spiritual setting, in a safe place. So I allowed myself to go with it. And we ended up making love, and it was beautiful. It felt like the starting point of a relationship. So we were calling and texting each other every day, all day. We talked about a lot of stuff. Our conversations were very romantic. It was beautiful. And the fact that he was so open and 
open-hearted as well, even after he'd, he'd experienced so much pain and suffering from other relationships that he'd had. These messages bear all the hallmarks of love bombing, which is a course of action designed to destabilize a person and make them vulnerable to essentially what comes next. July 1990, Birmingham. Two young women were about to hit the headlines, victims of a coercive plot by a boyfriend with a criminal motive. Patricia Carhill and her friend Karen Smith were having fun. They were young teenagers living with their parents and going out. When the two met, Patricia was 16, Karen was a little bit older, she was 18, but the two just loved going out dancing, they'd go partying together in some of Birmingham's nightclubs. But not everything was so sweet and innocent. They'd found themselves mixed up in petty crime. In fact, a warrant was out for their arrest. They were about to face court. Faced with possible criminal records for shoplifting, Patricia was offered what seemed like the perfect escape. Patricia actually met an older man in one of the nightclubs and he would go on to become her boyfriend. And then one day he turns around and offers her a once in a lifetime opportunity. He said, I'm gonna send you and a friend to the Far East, all expenses paid holiday on me. Patricia persuades Karen that this trip would be a really good idea. Firstly, it would be fun, but secondly, it will be a way of escaping attending court. So we don't know the full details of what exactly happened, but things were not what they seemed with this trip. It would later emerge that allegedly Patricia's boyfriend was abusive, that he coerced her into going on this trip and that he beat her up when she tried to back out. The teenagers told their parents they were taking a trip to Scotland. But on July 5th, they flew out of the UK on business class tickets to Thailand, supposedly to meet Patricia's new boyfriend. The girls were due to fly from Heathrow to Bangkok, but their route home, according to their tickets, was via the Gambia and Amsterdam, two very well-known drug smuggling routes. The girls may not have noticed this rather suspicious route, but the authorities certainly did. They were watching them. They've lied to the parents about where they're going. They've been sent on this trip by some questionable people, let's say, and they have no clue that they are on a drug smuggler's route. The girls had no way of knowing their lives were about to change forever to think that they'd expect to be going on a once-in-a-lifetime trip to meet Patricia's boyfriend in this exotic city, to then being stopped by the police because you are carrying so much heroin. What we know generally happens in female drug trafficking cases is that they've often been coerced in a romantic way. Some criminals will manipulate their victims by using emotional tactics to make them do things that they wouldn't do otherwise. So, for instance, they might be lonely, they might need love. London, December 2023. Although Sophia and her client-turned-boyfriend hadn't seen each other in two months, the stream of calls and texts between them had intensified. And then, there was a bombshell. We'd been chatting for probably half an hour, and he said, you make me feel like I was born again. It was just really beautiful stuff, really deep stuff. And then he said, will you marry me? He said, no, I'm serious, will you marry me? Because I really want to marry you. And at that point, it was, I said, Sophia, you're an open person. At this moment, you do really love this person. You do really care for him. I said, okay, let's get married. The fact that Sophia's received a proposal within two months of knowing this man to me, it seems somewhat concerning. Everything is very intense, very whirlwind, and adding a proposal to that, I think, just really evidences how much this new boyfriend is trying to almost overwhelm Sophia's life. And he said he wanted to get married in England. So 
In England, with a registry wedding, if he's a foreigner, he has to be in this country for at least a month before we can get legally married. Part of the reason why couples have to wait for 29 days between giving notice and getting married is to prevent occasions where there might be a snap decision in getting married and also where there may be some form of coercion from one party to the other. So that's the earliest appointment that we can have and that's the notice, my love. As Sophia began to prepare for the arrival of the man who was now her fiancé, a problem arose. He called me and said, I'm booking the ticket. And then he said, the price in Dubai is 7,000 for the return ticket business. Can you check how much it is on your end? And it was 5,000. He said, look, can you book it on your end? I'll give you all of my details. Gives me the card. Card got declined twice. He said, can you just pay with your card and I'll give you the money? I didn't think anything of it. He's already paid me £2,000 plus for my healing sessions. So the guy has money. So I pay for it. This could be an example of something that you do see in scamming techniques, where someone is evidencing their financial situation to trick someone into feeling comfortable sharing their finances back. I was really excited that he'd landed. When I opened the door, I hugged him. And I was really excited. One of the couple's many embraces was caught on Sophia's in-house CCTV. But within 24 hours, there was news from Dubai. The second day, somebody had called him from his family and said that his grandfather was in hospital and he was very, very, very sick. And he asked me what he should do. And of course, the only answer I can give to him is to say, you have to go. Before he left, Sophia gave her fiancé a very personal present. When he had told me he had to go back to Dubai, I gifted him a, I think it was three or four thousand pounds gold ring. It was almost like a wedding stroke engagement ring that I wanted to give him. As soon as her fiancé landed, the couple restarted their long-distance romance. And we were talking on the phone. I said, why don't I just come to Dubai? It seems like something out of a fairy tale book. This new person has swept into her life and is showing her all the love and affection that she's been missing. And so this just feels like a natural next step. He said, yeah, let's get married here. Coming up, Sophia's boyfriend turns on her and she's detained in Dubai. My whole life is falling apart because I fell in love with the wrong person. And Patricia and Karen are caught red-handed with four million pounds worth of heroin. This was not a small amount of heroin. This was one of the biggest hauls they'd ever seized. December 2023. Actor-turned-alternative therapist Sophia Hyatt was planning to get married in Dubai following a whirlwind romance with a former client. He said to me that he didn't want me to pay for anything when I was there. He said, I know you're an independent woman, but we do things very differently here. Encouraged that her new boyfriend was still keen to get married, Sophia booked the tickets to Dubai. But the day before leaving, she remembers receiving a worrying call. And then he said, oh, Sophia, I'm not going to be able to see you. Everybody who's flying over from England is getting bird flu. They say it's a pandemic right now. I said, don't worry, you'll be in quarantine for five days. I'd be happy just to wait for you. 
On face value, this seems like Sophia's partner is being very considerate and caring. He's unwell, he doesn't want her to become unwell. However, you do start to think that coupled with some of his previous behaviours, such as getting her to pay for the flights, him leaving the UK after only two days, now he's unwell, it's all starting to build up as if something's not quite right. Undeterred, Sophia flew out to Dubai just after Christmas. When I got there, he was obviously still unwell and in quarantine, and... I sent him a message saying, I know you said you wanted to pay for everything. I'm not comfortable with you paying for everything. I'll pay for my flights because they're business class flights, which cost 5,000. But if you want, you can pay for the hotel. He said, of course I will. Believing her boyfriend was about to refund the cost of her hotel, Sophia decided to treat herself to a New Year trip to Saudi Arabia. So I bought the tickets last minute hotel bookings on New Year's Eve, the whole thing cost me £5,000. So I sent him a message saying, babe, I am gonna go. So could you just send me that £5,000? He then sends me a message saying, you gave me that money because you wanted me to stay with you. I was a little bit in shock. By turning the tables on Sophia, saying to her, basically, it was you that wanted me to come. It was your idea to buy the tickets. What he's now doing is gaslighting her. Gaslighting is something that occurs when someone misrepresents something as factual that did or did not happen. And I think that this is exactly what is starting to happen between Sophia and her new relationship. Gaslighting is just one method that criminals use to manipulate an individual into doing their bidding. A criminal is going to focus in and hone in on what's important to that person and identify what is most likely to, to drive them to act in this way that they wouldn't do otherwise. July 6th, 1990, Bangkok. Patricia Carhill's boyfriend had offered her and her friend Karen an easy way to avoid their problems in the UK. But the teenagers didn't realise that the all-expenses-paid trip to Thailand came with strings attached. I mean, looking at it now, it does seem suspicious because the girls were due to fly from Heathrow to Bangkok. But their route home, according to their tickets, was via the Gambia and Amsterdam, two very well-known drug smuggling routes. But they are naive teenagers. When they landed in Bangkok, they were expecting to be met by Patricia's new boyfriend, but he was nowhere to be seen. A man claiming to be his friend met them at the airport. You've got to remember this is 1990, and yet he gave them $1,000 and still they weren't suspicious. This man says that he's going to take them up north to an area called Chiang Mai, which we know is part of the notorious golden triangle of drug smuggling in Thailand. Patricia's boyfriend never showed. Instead, the girls made use of the money they'd been given and enjoyed their free holiday in northern Thailand. Then, the night before their flight home, another man turned up. He also claimed to be a friend of Patricia's boyfriend. He asked the girls to take home bottles of shampoo, tins of biscuits, and they accepted without question. We have to remember that these girls are young. You're more impressionable when you're at that age. So I think with all the emotions that are just going on, it's easy to imagine you could be persuaded to do this. The next evening, the girls headed to the airport. Their rucksacks crammed with the shampoo bottles and biscuit tins. What the girls didn't know was that their whole journey was being tracked. And when they landed at Bangkok airport, customs officials were waiting for them. The girls even then wouldn't have realized that they were in trouble. It could have just been a random check. But as the bottles of shampoo and the 
biscuit tins were separated from their holiday clothes, it dawned on them that something wasn't right. In those bottles, in those biscuit tins, was pure heroin. This was not a small amount of heroin. This was four million pounds worth. One of the biggest hauls they'd ever seized. Drug trafficking is an extremely serious crime in Thailand. In some instances, it's punishable by death. The girls were in trouble and they knew immediately. What had started off as a fantasy trip arranged by Patricia's boyfriend had quickly turned into a nightmare. They were facing years and years in prison or even death. Dubai, December 2023. 49-year-old actor Sophia Hyatt claims the boyfriend she'd flown out to marry suddenly turned on her when it came to paying back the money she'd spent on business class flights for him. I said, I'm confused. He said, well, you gave me that money. You paid for the ticket because you wanted me to be with you. This is a significant red flag because it's going from someone who is very loving and doting and caring to suddenly the script being switched back on Sophia quite drastically. I said, we discussed this. You wanted to be with me. I wanted to be with you. We were going to get married. Your card got declined. And then I sent him the text message forward and said, look, this says I will give you the money. Then he said, you're having a fight with me over £5,000? On an emotional level, I felt shocked. And at that point, I think I realised that this guy was not what he seemed. Sophia is probably almost starting to feel like she's waking up because there's been this wild whirlwind romance and now something's happened that's kind of snapped her out of it. She's starting to look at it with open eyes, really, for the first time. When I found out that he wasn't giving me the money, I switched off. I didn't want to marry him anymore. I think I was just determined for him to pay for what he had done. I guess I just had enough. Because I have a large social media presence, I said, if you don't give me the money, I'm going to put your face on social media and let everybody know what you've done. Up until this point, Sophia and her fiancé had been communicating via text. But then she got a call. After I'd threatened him with putting his name on social media, he called me and he said, I don't think you're going to do that because I've got pictures of you naked. Shocked and angry, Sophia responded with a threat of her own. In my house, I have CCTV in every room, including the bedroom. So what had happened in England was we'd made love that evening and in the morning he said, was that recording last night? I said, I guess so. He was like, oh, can I, I, I want to delete that. I said, absolutely. So he deleted it. I sent him a text message on WhatsApp saying, by the way, the video that you deleted wasn't deleted and you can see everything in detail. What's really clear here is that there is a huge amount going on in Sophia's head because there has been this period of intense relationship and love and now she's feeling rejected, she's feeling lost, she's feeling insecure and essentially she's lashing out. In fact, in her desperation, Sophia unknowingly broke Dubai law. I think it's reasonable for her to feel anger and rage at this point but by threatening to expose this man on social media, Sophia in the UAE is committing what is a serious offence, one for which she could have received a fine of up to £100,000 or up to two years in prison. 
Unaware of the possible consequences, Sophia headed to the airport to fly out to Saudi Arabia. They've taken the luggage, they've stamped my passport. I then go to the gates where you put the passport down and it just bleeped and wouldn't let me through. I did it again, it didn't work. And there was uh, somebody there who works at the airport and I said, it's not working. And they said, go to that door over there. I walk in and there's an office with the police officer. And he, and he just looks at me and I said, um, my passport's not working. And he just nodded, took my passport. Coming up, Sophia faces being banged up in Dubai. Oh God, <laughs> I just, I don't know how I'm keeping it together. And Patricia and Karen are charged with smuggling heroin. Patricia was too young to face the death sentence, but for Karen, it remained a possibility. Dubai, New Year's Eve. 2023. Sophia Hyatt had discovered in the worst possible way that her boyfriend was not marriage material. Not only had he ripped her off for thousands, he had threatened to plaster naked pictures all over the internet. I felt shocked. I don't know who this guy is. I've come here to get married and now I've realised that this guy is he's a con man. When she tried to leave Dubai, she'd been stopped at the airport, had her passport removed, and then a police officer had detained her. And he said, come with me. He opened this door, told me to sit inside. And he closed the door, locked it up. It was very small, it was probably one meter wide. No windows apart from this small space with bars on it. I've never been in a space like that. I've never been locked up and told I can't move. There's gonna be a significant psychological impact for any person who is off guard, apprehended, held within a police suite at an airport. It's gonna be very disorientating and confusing. My heart was going, I was in this prison. <sighs> and so I started screaming out the window. I was scared. Sophia recalls being left in the airport holding cell for around six hours before being transferred to a police station for further questioning. We go into this office. You are extorting a man for money or you're going to release a sex tape of him. I was like, no, no, oh my God. I, and I just, I was just in so much shock. I was like, oh my God, we were going to get married. I can't believe this. Sophia's former boyfriend had brought a legal case against her for blackmail and extortion. Defamation is a serious allegation in the UAE. And over the last few years, there have been a number of high profile incidences of this. I'm like, all you have to do is open my phone. I said, just open it, look at the messages. They didn't open the phone. In just four days, Sophia's former boyfriend had wrecked her life. She'd gone from planning a fairy tale wedding in Dubai to being interrogated by the country's police for a serious crime. Bangkok, 1990. Birmingham teenagers Patricia and Karen had been arrested. They believed they were on their way back from a holiday funded by Patricia's boyfriend. But they'd unknowingly become drug mules, their bags stuffed with four million pounds worth of heroin. The girls faced tough questioning and they were facing the toughest of jail sentences. They are facing what is apparently Thailand's largest ever heroin haul. And they're completely on their own. Patricia's boyfriend has not turned up in Bangkok and they've lied to their parents about where they really are. 
The girls must have been just shell-shocked at this point. By now, news of the girls' arrest had reached the UK. Both sets of parents ended up finding out from West Midlands police, which must have been the biggest shock a parent could ever receive. Firstly, that their child had lied to them, the halfway around the world, and somehow they'd been caught in the biggest ever drug smuggling ring in Thailand. I don't think, if I'm being honest, there's a teenage girl alive who hasn't tried to pull the wool over their parents' eyes. But this is on a whole different level. They thought their girls were in Scotland. How do you comprehend that? Despite the girls pleading their innocence, five months later, they both appeared in front of a Thai court charged with smuggling heroin. Patricia was too young to face the death sentence, but for Karen, it remained a possibility. She wanted to plead not guilty, but she was persuaded that if she did go not guilty, she could end up getting the death penalty. So she was advised to change that plea to something that we don't have here in this country. It's guilty, but ignorant. Patricia, now 17, was sentenced to 18 years, but Karen, an adult in the eyes of the law, was given 25. Back home, there would have been very little sympathy for those girls. They'd been caught with a huge amount of illegal drugs that would cause untold damage. And there were perhaps many who said they deserve their imprisonment, they deserve their sentence, and they deserve the appalling conditions. Both girls were sent to Bangkok's notorious Large Yao prison. To give you a sense of this prison, it has this nickname, the Bangkok Hilton, which is very darkly ironic. The conditions in there are pretty horrific. It's known to be one of the toughest prisons in the world. Thousands of inmates sort of crammed in. They describe it like sardines and just an incredibly emotionally, psychologically difficult prison to be in. The conditions were awful. They were crowded, it was smelly, it was appalling. And here were two teenage girls facing the fact that they will be in their 40s when they will be released. New Year's Eve 2023. Sophia Hyatt tells how her former boyfriend ripped her off to the tune of £5,000 and then accused her of extortion, leading to her arrest by Dubai police. We have to remember that in the context of the UAE, there are various behaviours that here in the UK might seem relatively minor, but can lead to criminal consequences. That could even include things like using certain swear words in public or engaging in abusive behaviour on social media apps or messaging apps. After six hours of interrogation, Sophia finally persuaded the police to look at the evidence on her phone. So when the police were reading my text messages, their whole reaction was that I had been scammed, that this guy was awful, that I was the innocent one. They said, OK, you're free to go, but we're going to keep your phone. And I said, what? Well, we need to investigate to make sure that there isn't a sex tape and we need to leave this with forensics. And you cannot leave the country, so your passport's been blocked. And I said, for, for how long? And they said, well, it can take up to six months. I was flawed. When it comes to the law, the wheels of justice turn slowly, meaning for the likes of Sophia, that's going to be a really challenging period. Things are going to seem like they're taking such a long time. They can take weeks or months, and this can be really hard on those that are impacted. 
It's a very peculiar feeling to know that actually you're not in jail, but the country itself is your jail. Coming up, Sophia is still trapped in Dubai. My whole life is fucking falling apart because I fell in love with the wrong person. And Patricia and Karen's plight hits the headlines at home. This case attracted huge media attention and campaigns for Patricia and Karen to be released. But it was no means certain that they wouldn't spend a long time in prison. January 2024. Londoner Sophia Hyatt had been detained in Dubai, unable to leave after her former boyfriend had accused her of extortion. And the stress was beginning to take its toll. I'm lying in bed and I've just had to cancel another client. My whole life is fucking falling apart because I fell in love with the wrong person. Oh, Jesus Christ, it's just like, how can my whole life just be stopped? It's clear at this point that Sophia is being significantly impacted emotionally. She's lost, but also quite angry, frustrated, and feeling some level of injustice about what's happening. Oh, God. I just I don't know how I'm keeping it together. This, this isn't fair. Sorry, Dubai, but this isn't fair. It was lonely. I felt lonely. It's the strangest feeling to feel like you're in this home that isn't your home. For the next month, Sophia went to the police station twice a week to check on the progress of her case. Every time I went there, I went with hope. Every time I returned back to my bed set, I was in tears again. So I was slowly losing hope. In many ways, it's the not knowing when things are going to happen. She's going to be living that every single day. Every waking moment, essentially, is going to be thinking about the worst case scenario. Finally, six weeks after her passport was removed, Sophia received the news she was waiting for. Her former fiancé had dropped the case against her. It meant that I was now free. So I was really excited and really happy and I checked into a really nice hotel and I remember going onto the beach feeling like I was on holiday for the first time. After a weekend celebrating, Sophia returned to the police station. I sit down in front of the same guy. He's tapping away at the computer. Oh, they've not released you. I'm sorry, I don't understand. He just released me. Yes, he's released you, but the court hasn't released you. At this point, I don't know what to say. There's a lot of misunderstanding, I think, around the process of when someone alleges a crime against another person and then withdraws their statement. This doesn't necessarily mean that all criminal charges are just going to disappear. Because if there is enough of a case, there can still be a criminal prosecution. Sophia's plight was not yet over. July 1990. The news that Birmingham teenagers Patricia Carhill and Karen Smith were to stand trial in Thailand for smuggling heroin hit the headlines in Britain. It received huge attention in the press here and indeed all over the world. It was, if you like, a warning to others. We will not accept drug smuggling and we will make sure that you are punished in the worst possible way, in the worst conditions. By 1991, Patricia and Karen were looking at a total of 43 years behind bars in one of Bangkok's most notorious prisons. Experts who talk about this case say that it's really unfair how the women were treated in court, that the Thai authorities really came down quite heavily on them. And ultimately, the man who coerced them into going on this trip, the real alleged mastermind behind all this, he was just never questioned. 
Despite initial condemnation in the wake of the girls' arrest, once they were behind bars, the tide of opinion began to turn. This case attracted huge media attention and campaigns for Patricia and Karen to be released. A renowned human rights lawyer, in fact, took on Karen's case. He represented her for free and really put pressure on for both women to be released. As did the government here. And in fact, the Prime Minister, John Major, was writing. The embassy was involved in negotiations. But it was no means certain that they wouldn't spend a long time in prison. It took almost three years, but finally, in 1993, the Thai king intervened. These two young women were not acquitted of the crime. They were given a royal pardon, which is basically show mercy because of the ages that they were. The girls had to carry the stigma of being found guilty of attempting to smuggle a huge amount of drugs. And they were not found not guilty. As far as the authorities and their records will show, they are guilty. On July 22nd, 1993, Patricia and Karen finally arrived back on British soil. For me, in a way, what is a sad end to this story, that it ended their friendship and it ruined their teenage lives. We know that Karen certainly moved on. She got married, she had a child, and tried to put it all behind her. This incident has completely changed Patricia's life forever. She's changed her name, she's moved away. She wants to stay out of the public eye. You know, let's not forget, if Patricia's boyfriend hadn't persuaded them to go to Bangkok, then their story would have been very different. We don't know who the man was. He was never interviewed, he was never charged. In fact, he was never found. And the two girls were left to face the consequences alone. Dubai, February 21st, 2024. After being banned from leaving the country following her boyfriend's accusations of extortion, Sophia's case finally made it to court. The way it works in Dubai is that you have a hearing, a one-to-one -one with the prosecutor. There's no jury. He makes the decision based upon what you said and the evidence. He then sends a file to the judge saying, I've heard the case, this is what I think should happen. If it's found that there is enough evidence against Sophia and these prosecution charges are bought, it means that she could be facing a significant fine or up to two years in prison. The judge in the case examined the evidence against Sophia and concluded there would have been enough evidence to prosecute her, but elected not to do so. So for Sophia, this was essentially the end of this matter. She was not going to go to prison. On February 26th, Sophia was finally allowed to fly out of Dubai leaving the emotional and financial turmoil created by her former boyfriend behind her for good. I didn't get any of my money back. The whole thing cost me about £40,000. That's the loss I made. In the space of four months, Sophia's life had been turned upside down. She succumbed to a whirlwind romance gave her boyfriend a ring and money, then followed her heart to Dubai to get married. But when he turned on her, she very nearly lost everything, including her freedom. I think it's just, it's made me realize that, yes, I am too trusting, but I'm not going to let him destroy my open heart and let him destroy the fact that I trust and I love people. It's helped me grow in many ways because after that experience, it made me realize how strong I was. I shared my story because I don't want this to happen to anybody else. If one person is watching this and it stops them from being in the same situation that I've been in, then I've won.